With the release of Old School Mobile just around the corner, I thought that it would be a good idea to help out some of the newer players and give you guys some important goals to work for that will greatly benefit your account. These goals are specifically meant for new and beginner players who don't really know what they should do in game. Also I have to address that another YouTuber by the name of Surgeon made a similar video more than a year ago and while his video is still valid to this day, there are many more things that a new player can strive for that can really benefit their account in short or long term. I'll leave this video in the description below and you guys should definitely check it out as it does include some very crucial tips and items that I'll not be going over in this video. Without further ado, let's get into 8 goals for new old school runescape players. Number 1. Dragon Slayer This quest is regarded as the hardest free to play quest in game and for good reason. In it, you have to kill a level 83 dragon by the name of Elvark. However, with a decent range level, that really should not be a problem. The reason why Dragon Slayer is on the list is because in order to start the quest, you'll need to have at least 32 quest points and by the time you have the required quest points, you have most of the free to play quests completed, which will make your transition to members a lot easier. However, I do recommend that you complete all free to play quests before you decide to get membership. The reward for completing the quest is 18,650 XP in strength as well as defense. You also get the ability to equip the rune play body which is considered as the best melee armor for free to play as well as the green dehyde body which is considered as the best range armor for free to play in game. Overall this quest is a must for any player who wants to make the jump over to members unless you're making a specific account build that restricts you from getting defense or strength experience. Number 2 Protection Prayers Protection Prayers are some of the most important prayers to unlock as you will use them well into high level progression of your account. These are known as Protect from Missiles, also referred to as Protect from Range, Protect from Magic and Protect from Melee. You unlock Protect from Magic at level 37 prayer, Protect from Missiles at level 40 prayer and Protect from Melee at level 43 prayer. I recommend training prayer after you get membership as training it through free to play methods is extremely inefficient. You want to train prayer through using dragon bones on a lit gilded altar find in a player owned house. What you want to do is go to world 30 and make your way to Remington. Upon arrival you'll see a large number of people advertising their houses. You want to right click on the portal and click friends house portal option. Then you'll type in the name of the person who is advertising their house outside the portal. After that you use your bones on the altar and get prayer experience. You can use an NPC called Files outside the Remington portal who will unnote your noted bones for a small fee of money. Number 3 Ava's Accumulator slash Ava's Attractor This cape slot item is a reward for completing a quest known as Animal Magnetism. It serves as a best in slot range cape for all stages of the game. Until you get 50 ranged, you can use the Ava's Accumulator at 50, you can upgrade it to Ava's Attractor, and when completing Dragon Slayer 2, which is a high level quest you probably shouldn't worry about if you're watching this video, you can upgrade the Attractor to Ava's Assembler when you get the Vorkath head, but as I said, you shouldn't really worry about that at the moment. The item is not only good because of its range bonuses and its use for training range all throughout the game, but also because of its effect. The item has an ammo recovery system which means that you will get some of the ammunition that you use such as arrows and bolts right back to the ammo slot. You will receive 72% of the ammo used which destroys the annoying process of picking up arrows or bolts after killing an NPC. However, 20% of the ammo does break on impact meaning you won't get it back or have the ability to pick it up. Also, 8% of the ammo is dropped on the floor However, that is nothing compared to picking up arrows after every kill. This item will save you a ton of money and remember to upgrade it at level 50 ranged to get the Ava's Accumulator. Number 4. God Capes While we're on the topic of best in slot items that can be upgraded on higher levels, let's talk about the Major Arena 1 reward called the God Capes. As mentioned, God Capes are a reward for completing the Major Arena mini quest which is located in level 56 wilderness, which means you can be killed by other players while you're wandering around the area. The place does have a bank in which you cannot be attacked, so when you head out to get this cape, you should not have anything of great value with you as you can lose it. 
In the mini quest, you have a kill a wizard known as Collodion that changes forms during the fight. All these fights are fairly easy with a decent magic and prayer level. Use the best offensive spell you can, but I'd recommend at least level 35 magic for the use of the firebolt spell. As I said, don't take anything too expensive into these fights as you can lose your items, so using wizard ropes with a fire staff and some decent food seems to be a good option. After you kill Collodion, you'll be teleported to the Mage Arena cave where you can choose which god cape you want and you can also buy a god staff which are used to cast the god spells. You have to cast these spells a hundred times in the Mage Arena in order to use them anywhere in the game and the staffs themselves cost 80,000 GP. The capes are best in slot items for low level players that cannot complete the Mage Arena 2 mini quest that imbues these capes giving them even better bonuses in the process. Overall these capes are really good for killing NPCs around the game using magic and you'll want to upgrade these capes when you get to a higher combat level so you might as well get the basic god capes out of the way as soon as possible. Number 5. Proselyte Armor Proselyte Armor is a set of armor that can be purchased after completing the Slug Menace quest. Now I know what you're thinking, another quest that I have to do? And to that I have to say yes. If you're going to ask any mid or high level player what you should do when you start the game, they're most likely all gonna say to do quests because you can get easy levels and great gear in the process of completing them. Anyways, the Proselyte Armor is a great set of armor to have for your account. You'll need level 30 defense and 20 prayer to wear it. The stats of the set are the same as wearing full adamant armor, however they're much better than that. While wearing the full set, the player is given a plus 18 prayer bonus which is amazing for its requirements. This armor will save you a ton of food and prayer potions on slayer tasks or boss fights that require you to use a lot of prayer. You'll even see high to mid level players using this armor while they're training slayer as the set is really good. The full set will only cost you 30,000 GP but in the long run it's going to save you a lot more money as previously mentioned on prayer potions and food. The quest slug menace really isn't too hard to complete and the requirements aren't too bad either. Overall get this set as soon as possible so you won't be spending money on unnecessary supplies. Number 6. Rogue's Outfit Rogue's Outfit is an untradeable set of armor that is obtained through opening crates awarded to players that complete laps in the Rogue's Den minigame which can be found in Birthorpe. In order to partake in this minigame, we have to have at least level 50 agility, which if you followed Surgeon's advice on getting the full set of Graceful, you should already have. You'll also need level 50 thieving, although higher agility and thieving levels are recommended. This might seem daunting at first, however thieving is a skill that can be trained fairly quickly and by the time you'll have full graceful, you should already have level 60 or more agility. The effect of wearing the full set is that upon pickpocketing NPCs around the game, you'll get double the loot of the initial pickpocket. Meaning that instead of getting 100 gold from one successful pickpocket of the Ardoin Knight, you'll get 200 gold. Pickpocketing Ardoin Knights is a very popular method of training thieving as it's fairly AFK. It does involve a ton of clicking, however, you don't have to look at the screen that often. Overall, the set can get you some decent GP as a low level player while you're training thieving, which is a good skill to get out of the way fairly quickly on your account. Number 7. Herb Runs Herb Runs are one of the best ways to passively make money in this game. Every 80 minutes you can do a herb run and in theory make a ton of profit over a long period of time. They only take about 5 minutes at most to complete and I'll leave some useful links in the description that will tell you the approximate profit per seed, what level you need to plant that seed and where the herb patches are located. There's a lot of information about herb runs and if I delve deeper into it, this video will be really long and there's already videos on YouTube that delve deeper into the subject. Also make sure to use super compost on your patches to minimize the possibility of your crops dying. Another thing I highly recommend is to complete Fairy Tale Part 1 quest from which you'll get an item called Magical Secateurs. While having this item equipped and harvesting either herbs, hops, allotments or grapevines, the yield of these will be 10% greater than normal. If you're struggling with money or just want to make some passive income, you should definitely get into the habit of doing herb runs 
and with the release of mobile, doing these runs will be a lot easier. And number 8, Void Armor. Void Armor is a set of equipment purchasable through spending points gained by winning rounds of the Pest Control minigame. To get there, click on the minigames button and search for the Pest Control option. Before starting the minigame, you have to have level 42 attack, strength, defense, ranged, and magic, along with level 22 prayer. All of these levels aren't too hard to get, so if you don't have them yet, don't worry, you'll get them soon enough. Once you're there, go on one of the three existing boats. The novice boat requires level 40 combat and awards players with 3 points after every successful game. The intermediate boat, which requires players to have a combat level of 70 and awards them with 4 points, and the veteran boat, which requires players to have a combat level of 100 and awards them every winning game with 5 points. Later, you can spend these points on buying individual pieces of void equipment and on other things you probably shouldn't spend points on before getting the set. The full set will cost you 850 points, so getting it will take you around 10 hours, but that depends on what combat level you are and what boat you can take. I'll leave a wiki page on the pest control minigame and a guide on how to play the minigame in the description, so if you're interested, make sure to check those out. The reason why you should get the full void is because the armor gives you equal defense bonus across all combat styles without lowering any attack bonuses. You can also purchase one of three helms, each distinguishable by the respected combat style. The ranger helm gives 10% damage and accuracy bonus, the melee helm also gives 10% damage and accuracy bonus, and the mage helm which gives 45% accuracy bonus. The set can later be upgraded to Elite Void through completing Hard Western Provinces Diary and through gaining and spending more points but if you're watching this video, you probably shouldn't worry about that, at least for now. Although the Void set was nerfed quite heavily more than a year ago, it's still a great piece of equipment that doesn't cost anything, but rather makes a player spend time playing the Pest Control minigame. Well, there you have it. These are my 8 goals for low level players, and if you guys found this video enjoyable or informative, make sure to drop a like and subscribe to my channel if you haven't already, as I'll be posting a lot more videos just like this in the near future. Anyways, hope you guys have a good day and I'll see you all later.